to uh, equity cyclicals with Scott. Right, equity cyclicals. Um, as Keith alluded to, there's been a bounce in the last couple of weeks on the cyclicals. Um, starting out with the S&P 500 super sectors, uh, basic materials, we're up 7.16% for the two weeks. We've got Royal Gold leading the charge at 12.8%, Titanium Metals 12.2%, Southern Copper 9.4%. Um, on the other side, we've got again US Steel was mentioned in the last meeting, underperforming at around five percent, but down fifty-two percent from yesterday, so quite significant. Uh, Worthington Industries actually the only stock that came in negative there, one point nine percent down, which is twenty percent down for the year today as well. Um, just looking at rubber, we've got uh, Cabot, which came in at thirteen percent for the two weeks move. Down. Up. Up. Okay. Up. Um, Industrials, 6 spot, 6.8% up for the period. Um, we've got, I mean, on the upside, we've got Boeing, Boeing which is coming in at 11.42. Um, underperforming the market, we've got Southwest Airlines coming in at 4.6%. Um, consumer discretionary um, came in at 6.8% for the two weeks. Interestingly enough, we've got a lot of premium brands which performed very well over the last two weeks. We've got Tiffany's that managed 20%. Harley Davidson 13.5%, Ralph Lauren 11.6%. Um, on the other side, you've got companies like Gap, um, basically didn't perform at all for the period of 0%. Staples 1.8%, which is 40% here today down. So interesting they performed so well during, during that time. Um, information technology 6.23%. Uh, Motorola, obviously the Google purchase, everybody's talking about the patents at the moment, so they performed um, 50 bips negative for the, for the period. Um, a large tech stock, JDS Uniphase, 34% uh, for a two week move. Um, they were upgraded by various analysts, they outperformed the estimates that were coming in. Um, and then Hewlett Packard, 42% uh, year to date negative, performed 4.5% for, for the period, but there's a Another story that we'll go into in the, when we go to the European space. Um, and then the financials performing 4.27% for the period. Uh, sector being weighed down by Goldman's, uh, which was off 4.3% over the two weeks uh, due to the Fed announcement and the uh, talking about the mortgages and servicing, etc. Moving into Europe, uh, Euro stocks, uh, super sectors, oil and equipment services came in at 7.7%. .7 4%, industrial and commercial services 7.64, tech hardware 7.4%, um, um, outperforming uh, that sector massively were Logitech International 19.6% for the period and Invensys which was coming in at 17.2%. <coughs> Logitech have been absolutely battered this year haven't they? Yeah, no yeah. Probably down a, like 60% before that. It's a, a before that got recovery. Yeah. 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 Um, Construction and materials, 6.74%, being led by Bath of ET. Uh, tech software, 6.5% for the uh, two week period. Uh, within that is autonomy. <laughs> uh, autonomy basically being taken over by Hewlett Packard with a bid of £25 per share, which was a, a nice little return on that one. And obviously, that, going back to the Hewlett Packard story, they're restructuring their business and they decided to take on autonomy as part of that. Um, we also have uh, United Internet AG, uh, which is an internet service provider. Uh, it was hit fairly hard in early August, it's recovering now. It did 15% during the two week period. Media, 5.38%, personal goods, 5.34%. Um, oil and gas producers, 4.97%. Um, we've got OMV and ENI, um, which outperformed quite significantly, 13 and 10% respectively for the two week period. Uh, quite well diversified companies. Industrial metals, 4.26, retail, 4.12, insurance, 4 spot 07, travel and leisure, uh, 3 spot 83. Ryanair finally coming off 0.32% for the period and Lufthansa underperforming 2%, 2.3% for, for the two weeks. Um, automobiles and parts 335 for the two weeks uh, but Porsche was doing 8% VW 4.6% uh, during those two weeks. 
Chemicals 2.82, Banks 1.94. Banks, um, RBS, Lloyds, Barclays performing well these last couple of days due to the recent, no major restructuring until 2015. Um, but not surprisingly, given the recent refocus on Greece, we've got Alpha Bank down 24%, National Bank of Greece down another 20% within two weeks. Um, finally, non life insurance, uh, one small 38%. And that concludes Europe. Okay, cool. Um, autonomy situation, phenomenal. So I did 67% uh, on that, 67% return. Not bad, five months. But I was actually uh, kicking myself because at one point I was actually short HP against it. So I had, I've been long autonomy like five months. And I had, um, I've had short Dell, swapped it for short HP, swapped it for short Micron. Well, you, uh, you've got to be yeah. thankful for the game. Oh, I know, but yeah. there it was a, to a lot of people. A lot of people I know were in it. It's great. Yeah. Um, where do we go from here? That I mean, that basically saved my August. So it was a uh, second best month this year, August for me. But um, where do we go from here? Okay, uh, I'm looking for the next cloud play. Um, lots of names about. I think as the market, you know, if the market comes off, you should be looking to pick those up if you're going to buy anything. Cloud stocks. One of the main concerns is security over the cloud. So pair it up. There's a couple of names out there. Do your homework. There's a couple of names out there you can get hold of. Um, but I'm looking at actually because we're going to be using as a company the Amazon cloud here. I'm go, I'm, uh, I've bought a little bit of Amazon, but I'm probably going to add to it. Um, one stock that's been battered, so cloud web security, uh, and it was a bit of a favourite retail stock, but I think people might have been bailing on it now, is uh, WebSense. I was actually long and cut it um, in August, but I might look at a second bite of the cherry. I mean, the, the only reason why I cut it was out of discipline, but also because on the day of autonomy, I had autonomy and WebSense together against a couple of shorts, and I thought, just trade out of the whole lot. You know, use, use autonomy as an excuse to clean your book up a bit. So, um, WebSense, is off, WebSense is off quite hard in the last six weeks. So Amazon and WebSense, cloud, and cloud security. I mean, interestingly enough, Amazon did 17.5% in the last two weeks as well. Yeah. Um, in the industrials, in the industrial metal space, I'm still long uh, copper stocks, um, short other industrial metal stocks. So I'm short Century Aluminium. And my favourite long copper stock is still Antofagasta. It's actually not down that much Antofagasta in the last four weeks. I think it was trading um, 1340, 1350. Yeah. Kind of like mid-range over the last couple of days. Down a bit today though, isn't it? But um, yeah, copper supply is still tight in China. And copper hasn't really been hit that hard. And I've still got... Um, Luxury autos um, versus airlines. So BMW, Porsche, short Lufthansa, and short IAG. One thing that's really hurting Lufthansa, and it went a little bit unnoticed in August because of all the turmoil in the wider markets is the um, German air tax, the environmental air tax that they brought in early this year. Um, air Berlin, the CEO left on August the 18th. Um, they missed numbers. He resigned and basically said they can't pass on higher fuel costs and the cost of the air tax to customers. And what he's seeing is German families actually traveling to Amsterdam to fly out of Schiphol. 
and then Lufthansa also have the um, the business end as well, and also IAG British Airways. And the thing is as well, I've got a couple of dog Spanish junk stocks in the portfolio, um, and IAG is quite a nice short against the cars, the luxury end, but also because of the Iberia exposure, I've got a kind of natural hedge against the Spanish junk. So, short Lufthansa, short IAG, long BMW, long Porsche. Uh, Anto Fagasta, top pick in copper. Short Century Aluminium. Cloud, Amazon, WebSense. What do you think about shorting these premium brands? Very strange, really. Yeah, I mean, it's always difficult. Like, demand is pretty inelastic. You see, Hermes, <coughs> last, uh, towards the end of last week, no, it was beginning of this week, Hermes came up with uh, record handbag sales, you know, $8,000 for a handbag. You know, luxury, luxury brands are still, will hold up relative to everything else. Like our Melbourne as well. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm quite happy to be long luxury autos. Yeah. Um, long luxury apparel. Apparel actually in the um, ISM contracted. They reported contraction. They were one of the industries reporting contraction. But that's more likely to be the lower end. Or the middle of the the middle of the park in terms of apparel price range. Okay, let's uh, move on to uh, defensives with John.